Welcome to the Wealth and Purpose Podcast, where people who are led by their hearts come to learn the secrets to creating wealth in a way that feels really good and live their purpose fully in the process. I'm your host, Patty Lennon. I'm an ex-type A corporate banker turned intuitive business coach. I'm also a wife, a mom to two preteens, a professor, Girl Scout leader, and well, hey, you get it. Like you, I wear a lot of hats. Whether you're looking for inspiration to get started or strategies to get growing, I am here to help you create abundance in every area of your life and business. Welcome. Hi there, and welcome to this episode of the Wealth and Purpose Podcast. Hey, I'm Patty Lennon, and I am really happy to be here with you. I think the ability to connect in this virtual way has become so important to me, I know personally, and I and I thank you for letting me share some time with you. What I'm finding is that there's opportunity to create a new way of being and a new way of living. And of course, all of that is emerging out of uncertainty. So I wanted to share with you today a few things. First, I want to tell you what it's been like for me personally in my home. And the reason I want to share that is simply because I've heard from people that the normalcy that I'm navigating with is giving them comfort. And what I mean by that is my life is pure chaos. And that is normal right now because things are uncertain and things are changing and it's really normal to not know what's going on and to feel like you're bumping into walls. I've also seemed to have moved out of that. And I want to share with you how that happened, what I did specifically and and what's possible uh, for you, as well as what's possible for us as humanity. And then finally, I'm just going to share with you some tools that perhaps will make it easier on you to connect to your own inner guidance so that you can navigate your life. And perhaps if you're taking care of a family, your family's life through this uncertainty with maybe a bit more confidence. Let's start off with how things have been. And and again, I'm sharing this really just for context to show you that no matter what's going on, it's okay. It doesn't mean you're doing something wrong spiritually or humanly or whatever. So um, at the time that I'm recording this, so it's this re- this podcast drops on Wednesdays. I'm actually recording this on Monday. Thank you producers for being willing to do things with my crazy schedule. The kids have been home for 11 days, 12 days, and today will be a day that we start distance learning. I also was in the process and am in the process of launching the receiving school, which starts on April 6th. And when when we started to move towards self-isolation, meaning I live in Connecticut, Connecticut, it became required a few days ago. But before that, we were practicing social distancing. And yeah, yeah, I know the words, people are using different words. But in any case, we were really in the house, basically. And I tapped in like I did for all of my clients that were planning on launching things to see, you know, do I keep moving forward with this? Is it of service? That's always my question. You know, is it of service to others when I'm looking at my business? And I was given that, yes, it was, but it was important for me to really create content and resources that are helpful to people independent of whether they join the receiving school. And so now my my focus right now in from a work perspective is really to be creating content each day, re- creating resources each day that is helpful to people that are, you know, walking through the time that we're walking through. And right now, as I record the podcast, that's right now the pandemic. But you could be listening to this at another time and maybe there's something else going on in your life that's created uncertainty. And my hope is that that's that what I share today is still helpful for you. I believe it will be. And it's interesting because t- about six weeks ago, two months ago, when we were planning this, the marketing for this launch of receiving school, 
when I was in conversation with my spirit guides, with my business guides, they had basically shown me that they did not want me really writing anything in advance, putting a lot of, you know, the marketing and the training and everything. They didn't want me doing a lot in advance. They told me, they gave me a list of things that I could do ahead of time. And the rest they said I was going to have to do in the moment in response to the questions I was getting. And I was comfortable with that because I've gone through enough with my spirit guides guidance to know that they don't lead me astray, but also a little uncomfortable because, you know, doing a lot of marketing and copywriting right at the last minute is intense. And look at, look at where we ended up. Of course, everything needs to be in response to what people are asking and talking about. Right. And that is so, that's the gift of being able to tap into you to your spirit guides. And if you don't necessarily believe in that term, just what God is telling you. And by the way, I don't equate my spirit guides to God. I um, I have spirit guides. They're what my spirit guides are. My understanding of spirit guides is they are beings who once were human. They've ascended. And now they're in a place where they can guide other humans. Um, they don't play, take the place of God per se, or source or the universe, they're intermediaries, essentially they're helpers. That's, you know, that's sort of an, a a more advanced level of tapping guidance, but you can start by tapping inner guidance. What is coming direct from you and your higher self and your connection to the divine. And that's what we're going to be talking about in a couple of minutes. How do you do that? But what it's looked like here is, you know, I've been working on getting copy and content out to, you know, that is helpful to people really not focusing on the sale of the receiving school per se, knowing that it will happen as a result of being of service to others. And that's really where I've always come from. And also inter, inter, what's the right word? Intermingling, I guess, my children and into my daily work life. And, you know, they're 12 and 14. They're certainly independent, but I mean, they need, they do need things from me because this is an untapped world. You know, they, for my daughter who's 12, for her to go out for a walk, she doesn't feel comfortable doing that on her own. So it's me going with her. My son will go on his own, but it's finding structure, (laughs) making sure he doesn't spend the day on gaming, which will end today because we start distance learning. And in the midst of all that, what I was feeling early last week was just a, a huge amount of frustration, a huge, a huge amount of confinement and whatever the opposite of freedom is, that's what I felt. And it made me feel very aggravated and tense. I was snapping at my husband, unusually so. I, I don't typically, we don't interact like that. And he was good natured about it, thank goodness. And just overwhelmingly feeling like this sucked, right? And and knowing that I need to do the thought work to move me out of that. But really that's how I felt. I mean, I was, felt like I was bumping into walls, trying to find my way through any particular task last week. The, the upside was I had made a commitment to support one small business every day. And that's been super fun coming, mailing people early birthday gifts, doing things that would generate, you know, an opportunity to support a a small business that maybe isn't going to get support right now, as well as supporting our local restaurants. So the upside to that was I felt much less pressure to cook all of our meals. (laughs) Um, And I also handed that off to the kids. And in my head, that was always something they should be doing is helping make dinner, but never got around to pushing them to do it. And so now they're doing it and happily and happily because they've got nothing else to do. (laughs) And you know, my son is funny. Once I gave him that responsibility, what I realized, and this is the opportunity that's sort of emerging in our houses. And it's something I've known about him is that he operates very well in freedom. That that's his I've joked that that's his love language is freedom. And so when he's given the total freedom to cook and he's given, you know, the opportunity to make a a request of, 
you know, what we purchase for dinner and that type of thing, you know, having total autonomy to create what he felt like creating really gave him a lift. And amazingly in this current environment where no day is the same and you kind of make your own rules, he's really been so happy, (laughs) really so happy. And it's been fascinating to watch because it's not that he's an unhappy kid. It's just that the structure of school is really, it's not what he's built for. And suddenly the world sort of matches the way that he'd like to operate. He is limited on being able to not go to his friend's house. He can only you know, deal with them virtually. But overall, he's just, he's thrilled with this new, this new life we're working through. And I think understanding that it's, or at least in his mind, it's temporary. I mean, it, it, it's temporary, but we don't know how temporary. Now, today starts distant learning, so we'll see how that goes. We'll see how he does, knowing he does have to hand in assignments, but I suspect it will be, this will be easier on him than on most because being unstructured is is how he's built. I share all that just to tell you, like, it hasn't, I didn't instantly use all the skills and, and knowledge of being able to tap my guides and my inner guidance and all of that and suddenly be in a Zen place about all of this. It didn't happen. I, I was, you know, I went through all the stages of grief and, and they're circular. So I continue to go through them. And, and if you have not understood that you're going through a grief period, I want to bring that awareness to you. Now, there's a chance you're escaping it. And, and I don't, I'm certainly not going to judge where you are or not even judge. I'm not going to tell you what you're going through, but I suspect the majority of us are going through grief. Even if it's a temporary grief, it's the loss of so many things. And without understanding when all of this is going to end, it's really, it, it does create grief. And so, you know, all the stages are happening, you know, for the first couple of days, I was a hundred percent in denial and feeling so Zen, completely deluding myself that that was where I was going to stay through all of this. And then, you know, going through anger and depression and, you know, swinging pretty much between frustration and anger and total, why even bother getting out of bed in the course of maybe 20 minutes every day um, was happening. And then something happened yesterday and it lifted. And this was really eye opening for me. And I think this is what will help you as well. By the end of the day, I just felt so alive and so tapped in and aware of all the possibility for all of us, for me personally, and for us as a humanity. And I promise you, this is waiting for you as well. And it really does have to do with tapping your inner guidance. So before I go into what happened for me personally yesterday and what I think led to this sort of this lift and this, you know, awareness of possibility, if you're not familiar with any tools that I've given in the past to tap your inner guidance, the one tool that I've been encouraging people to use the most is to, when you get up in the morning, before you do anything else, you want to tap into your own well of wisdom. And the way you do that is to just, it don't pick up a phone. It's what, essentially it's what you don't do. You don't pick up a phone. You don't start a conversation. You don't turn to someone else's needs before you've turned inward. And you can do that really easily by just doing three deep breaths. I'm going to do them with you now. So you're going to do three deep breaths and set an intention for the day. That's going to draw in exactly what you need. It's a very simple process. It takes less than a minute. And it's very powerful. And it's not the only thing that I encourage people to do, but it's a very it's a very simple one I can teach you right here on this podcast. So we're gonna you can do this anytime, by the way. But when you do it first thing in the morning, it's the most potent because you have had disconnection from humanity. You are most access, you have most access to yourself first thing in the morning. So you're gonna breathe in and breathe out. Breathe in and breathe out. Breathe in and breathe out. And once you've done that, you're going to pick what you want the day to be 
and you do it in terms of how you want it to feel, or it can be how you want it to be. So, you know, this morning I said, I want to feel productive. Usually under normal circumstances, I say, I want it to feel, I want life to feel magical. I want it to be magical. It doesn't really matter the words you use. It's essentially the essence of what you want for your day. And the reason that that works so powerfully is it immediately will start bringing to you ideas, understandings, as well as objects and situations that support that feeling state or that way of being. And that's a first step. And of course, if you want more steps, I'm happy to share them with you. But instead of turning this podcast into a training session, I invite you to join um, my upcoming masterclass. You can go to pattylennon.com forward slash masterclass where I'm going to be talking more about this. I'm actually going to be hosting classes every week during the next few weeks just to give support to the community as well as share information and ideas on how we can lift ourselves individually and collectively through this time. Depending on when you're listening to this, I may be offering a different master class. So I'm not going to even tell you what the topic is this week. I'm just going to tell you we're going to be hosting that today, the day that this drops on Wednesday at noon. But if you can't be there live, and that's noon Eastern, you can get the replay. And then as soon as uh, the master class is over, we'll change the master class opt in to the replay opt in. So you can access this no matter when you're grabbing or listening to this podcast. And we'll go through some more tools that will let you tap into this inner guidance. But what I want you to focus on is the idea that up until now, most likely you've looked outside yourself for answers. And I found myself doing this last week too. And this has to do with why I think there was a shift yesterday for me. I would get up in the morning and although I have a very disciplined practice of not going onto social media in the morning for, for a few hours, I found myself getting up and my very first thing I did was check the news, which I never do. I didn't go deep into the news, but I wanted to see, was there any updates? And then onto social media. And I didn't realize it until Saturday. But what I was really doing was I was waiting for someone to give me the answer of how we get out of this, what I'm calling the worst escape room ever. We're trapped in our houses. I've been looking for someone to tell me, here's the key, or this is how long it's going to be, or this is what we can expect. And the reality is those answers don't exist right now. And what's beautiful about that, as painful as it is, is that that means the only place we can actually get the truth about how things are going to be for us and what's best for us is within us. And just sitting in quiet, and asking yourself those questions that you have and getting your answers is the key. That guidance is going to naturally take you to your highest ground. So what I did yesterday that was different was um, I got up and I purposely, even though it it took willpower, I did not tap into anything for about an hour and a half. And then I checked really quickly just to see because we were going to go to the beach in Connecticut. I just wanted to make sure that the beach is hand closed. So I just checked Connecticut's news and then I put the phone down again. And then I did yoga and I took a long walk and I meditated. I did all the things I know connect me to myself and to my body and to my inner wisdom. And then I made a commitment to stay off all connection, including even text for the rest of the day. And we went to the beach And the water, the open water always calms me. But if you don't have access to whatever your ideal natural system that lifts you is, just go outside, just breathing fresh air for a long period of time. We were there for a few hours and it was freezing, but it was so good. And then we got home and I stayed off of it. And with by, I'd say by 7.30, all of a sudden, I just felt like there was so much possibility. And I didn't know exactly what that meant for me in the coming weeks because we're, I still need to finish my book. I've talked to you guys about that on this podcast before, you know, and I have not been able to even touch it since this started. But I could just feel the possibility. And then I did something that I shouldn't have done. I opened up Facebook. And my main motivation for doing it was to check and see if anyone had birthdays that maybe I I didn't realize or I lost track of in the midst of this. But I read a few posts and with each one, I just felt myself getting pulled down further and further and further. 
And I think for all of us, we need to understand how much the weight of other people's truth can really weigh us down. Even if it's the, it's the truth for them right now, even if it's the highest feeling or calling, whatever they're communicating for them, that's for them. And it really takes us away from the truth of us. And so beyond just the breathing exercise in the morning, I'm going to really encourage you to put a very strict constraint on your own use and consumption of other people's ideas. And what that means is social media, news media, regular media, really um, tapping into all that takes you away from your own inner guidance. And if you can just start to distance yourself from that, give yourself a detox from it, what is possible for you and what is true for you will very quickly rise to the surface. I promise you, I get this question all the time. Like I can't hear what I'm hearing. I can't hear my inner answers. I can't, Patty, you told me to listen and I'm not hearing it. And when I work with someone one-on-one and they're telling me that, and we go through what their day looks like, it's very clear that they're consuming a lot of other people's voices. And if they're able, interestingly enough, outside this current environment to go into isolation from to take a day apart from other communication, almost always they see, you know, anywhere from a 20 to 50% lift in what they're able to tap to within themselves. Because yes, I have full use of all my intuitive gifts. I have you know, I see, I hear, I know, I feel things outside my senses. And maybe you're not going to be immediately at that stage, although it's possible for everyone. I truly believe this. You can still feel what's true for you. You can feel your heartbeat, the heartbeat of your emotional system. You can feel the heartbeat of your knowing what's right for you. Like, you know, what food's right for you. You know what your body needs. You know what the next thing is that you can be working on that's going to make you feel productive. You do know all those things. And that's the basis of inner guidance. That's the stepping zone of first knowing that, taking action on that. That's what's going to open you up further to having these higher intuitive gifts which is what we teach in the receiving school. The first half of receiving school is really about tapping into the abundance that the universe is sending you and being able to receive it, which by the way, starts with receiving yourself first in all its forms. And we're going to talk more about that on the master class. But it also has to do with understanding that the universe has the ability to deliver abundance to you at every moment. The fact that everything that's going on does not change the universe's ability to take care of you right now. And I think that's going to be the most challenging or the biggest challenge to our existing paradigm right now. We are a world that focuses on external measures to create abundance. And this is really going to create a very rich playground for you to invite that abundance in and to let go of that paradigm that the outside world affects your ability to create abundance for yourself. And that's the second part of receiving school and what we teach. And then the final part is we teach how to access your intuitive gifts, how to talk to your spirit guides, how to get direct communication from the metaphysical world to guide you. I promised you that I'd share with you where to get help. So I just want to remind you of the resources I already shared. First of all, you can join me for the masterclass, whether you're on live or replay. And I'm going to have a very, that masterclass is going to be about, I'm going to allow for two hours. You can limit yourself to an hour. We'll do the majority of the teaching in the beginning of it, but I'm going to make myself available for two hours so that I can answer and coach anyone who needs it. So the first hour is going to be the teaching The second hour is going to be open Q&A and coaching. And this is the way that I'm going to be making myself available at no cost to help people and coach them through this time. So again, the replay will be available and you can listen to just the first half of it if you're just looking for the teaching or the instructional part of that. So that's the first resource. You go to pattylennon.com forward slash masterclass. I also have a pop-up Facebook group that if you join the masterclass, you'll get the link on the thank you page to join if you're interested. I'll also put it here in the show notes. It's called the Receiving Method Insiders Group because all of this teaching is based on the receiving method. It's the ability to receive first yourself, receive abundance the universe is sending you, and receive the guidance and communication available to you at any time. 
all the master classes are taking you into the receiving method deeper. This Facebook group, the Receiving Method Insiders group, is set up to support you with having a playground for you to ask questions of me at any time during this period. I would say we're going to keep the Facebook group open till April 6th when the receiving school starts. But if I find that the isolation that we're all experiencing right now is going to go on longer, that Facebook group will probably stay open maybe a few days beyond that just to offer some additional resources. But I'm doing daily Oracle card readings in there. Um, and taking questions and having to navigate this time. We're also hosting the replay of all the trainings in that group. So if you missed last week's training, which was about tapping intuitive guidance and opening up to these gifts that were, were, are available for us right now, then you're going to be able to access that one as well in the Facebook group. So we'll put the link to the Facebook group in the show notes. The third tool that I already offered you is that breathing, that morning breathing, what I call the one minute morning exercise. So if you, you know, want to go back and listen to the podcast again, you can do that and get the details on that. But again, it's just breathing those three deep breaths and setting an intention for the day. And then the final resource that I offered you here was to cut yourself off from other people's voices via social media, media, maybe even text. Maybe you need to turn off the text, all of it, and and spend the majority of your day connected to self because that's really, really going to get you um, connected to that inner guidance so that you have that knowing of the best guidance that is right for you specifically. Forget the rest of the world. And of course, when I say that in terms of inner guidance, you know, if your inner guidance is telling you to go against some requirements that your particular state or government has put into place, I'm not encouraging you to go against that. I think we do have to work within the the social contracts constructs that have been set up. So any recommendations that um, or any requirements that your community has put into place in ours, you know, we're all non-essential businesses are closed right now. And the request is you don't go out unless it's essential. And, you know, we're respecting that except to exercise which I consider essential. I do think you want to first honor that, but then look for inner guidance around everything else. And then finally, if um, you already know you'd like to join us in the receiving school, um, you can go to www.thereceivingschool.com and you can grab your spot in the receiving school directly there. We start April 6th and Over the course of the two months following April 6th, you'll have access, intimate access to me and all the trainings and guidance around this. So I will right now say goodbye and tell you for now, goodbye for now until next week. Or if you join us in the trainings or the Facebook group, then we can stay connected there, which I would love to do. And of course, my Facebook group, the pop-up Facebook group for the Receiving Method Insiders group is a protected space, meaning there is no, there's no negativity allowed in there. And we are engaging a very high vibing community in there. I'm happy about that. And that's public. So feel free to invite your friends, any colleagues that you think would benefit from that and would enjoy having that support. And finally, what I will leave you with is this. I know that this journey for you is probably not what you expect it right now. And I am sending you my love and wishing you health and ease and clarity. And just know I am here to support you. Join me in any of these resources and I will be happy, happy to answer any questions you have. Much love. Hey, thanks for listening. And if you know someone who needs to hear this message, please share this podcast with them. And if you're feeling really generous, I'd love for you to leave us a review on your favorite podcast app. It helps us reach many more people. And it fills my heart with so much joy when I hear what you had to say about what you heard. I am cheering for your success. Have an amazing day.